I'm I'm I'm, I'm at the house. From the you start from the bottom up first of all. Because it'll give you if the plane is this big and you're feeling it. Um you wanna start from the bottom up because it'll leave you a lot less confused. All of this can start to be very confusing if you start from the top down. So I start from the very bottom. Um like like she was saying, we wanna look um at everything below where the, the plant branches out. Mm. And we generally wanna prune everything up under there. Now uh oh, you okay? You good? You steady? Um you want to prune everything below. It's really just for airflow, but also, again, you want to be pushing that energy up towards the upper branches and so that it, you can be producing more fruit um, with that excess energy. So you've already pruned all of these, so we're good here. But you see these new, yeah. these new ones? This is a sucker. It's when it grows between the main branch. I mean, the uh, yeah, the main stem and the branch. And so we just take those off. And like here, you see this one is big. It'll create a whole another branch. Can you see it? Yeah. So we just take that one off. Um, you can use a tool. <laughs> I just be using my fingers. When so they get, yeah, that's the same thing. When they get really thick, you want to clip them. But when they're small like that, you can still pick them off with your hand. Yep. And do you do that with with something sharp so that you don't, you know, tear into the um, stem of the plant because it can expose it to, you know, fungus and bacteria. Um, you wanted to star over really nicely like these did, so that it, it kind of closes the, the cut. And so yeah, that's basically it. You know, it, you can prune more depending on your pruning philosophy. Some people prune all of the, the sub-branches and like create a very particular type of structure to the plant. But in this case, it seems like y'all are kind of letting it do its thing. So I would say just go through and find any places in between where you might see things starting to, to form. So. I take those off immediately. I go through the tomatoes every day. Do you? Yeah. I, I'm bad. I wait two, three days, and then I come back and go, where'd that come from? Yeah, I kind of try to nip it before it gets out of, out of control. And so, yeah, you just go from, start from the bottom up. And we had a storm come through the other day, and they were stringed up, but after I pruned them, they were loose, and I didn't tighten the strings. Mm -hmm. And the storm, as you see down the other end of the row, knocked a lot of them over. But usually I try to feed them through the trellis. Would you take like all of this off? Yep, I would. Here, use this. Take it all off. This whole thing? Mm-hmm. No, not this, not this. Oh, not just that. a just oh, a little this. thing in between. Ooh. You just clip it off, yep. And I just kinda throw it back into the bed and let it You wanna try some? some compost. I'll do it with my ass. Um. Okay. Awesome. And also, I had questions about pruning because I was told that you only prune indeterminate varieties. That determinate varieties, you shouldn't prune. You should just let them fill out because they produce a set amount and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And I've heard that too. And I've seen different. I mean, it really... The, Lots honestly, of different philosophies. Yeah, there's, I've heard five or six different philosophies on this. And I've heard that pretty consistently is with determinate types, we would leave them. But indeterminate, you definitely want to hard prune and not feel bad about it because you really want that plant to push that energy up to the fruit so that you can get as much as possible. That's the point of having that kind of variety. Love it. Thank you.